Hello, hello everyone. Lydia here from Screw the Cubicle and welcome to our four-part learning series of Reinvent Your Life and Career 101. Today is our final session in this series and I'm going to be sharing with you uh, the framework of stages and steps to quit your job and start a business. So there's a few more minutes before we officially start. I wanted to come in here uh, to make sure that you can hear me and see me okay before we get started. So if you are here joining me live, please say hello on the chat box uh, and let me know that you can see me and hear me. And then that way, uh, I know I'm not talking to myself, which is always a good thing when I do these things. Uh, and also let me know where you're from and what uh, you're working on. If you're in the stage of developing an idea or you have an idea and you've been sort of uh, mulling over how to launch your business, uh, maybe you're in transition from your job, uh, it would be lovely for me to know a bit more um, about uh, where you are and, and what, what are you here for, and what you're most excited uh, to learn. So as Bettina uh, has already introduced herself in the chat box, Bettina is going to be the one uh, that you'll be talking to if you have any tech difficulties today uh, or if you have a question that you want to submit uh, for me to answer at the Q&A at the end of this webinar. Um, Bettina will help you there and make sure that uh, you get everything that you need. So as Bettina has mentioned, if you can't see or hear me, uh, do refresh the page. Sometimes that gives it um, a hard refresh and that helps to reset the entire platform for you. Uh, we're also best viewed on Chrome. Uh, so if you come here uh, on Crowdcast, Crowdcast on Chrome, you'll have a better chance of making sure that all the tech difficulties will be away. Um, now, if you guys are watching me from the Facebook live stream or our YouTube live stream uh, on the different platforms, uh, please join the Crowdcast link that is provided for you because then you get to participate in the conversation. You get to uh, meet everyone that's in here live. And also you get to um, really ask me your personal questions this is sort of the best thing of what I love doing uh, these trainings is to ensure that you are getting your specific question answered you're getting that coaching that you need to move forward with your cubicle escape plans and your business building journey okay so if you ask you will get uh, for sure so bring your questions uh, on what it is that you're struggling with when it comes to quitting your job and launching a side hustle or a business that you've been thinking about for quite a while um, I would also really appreciate it if you guys can help me share this training if you are attending live uh, you can see the invite button uh, sort of on the top right hand corner of the screen on Crowdcast and if you press invite, uh, you can share to your different platforms of uh, where you hang out, could be LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, and if you know some people that would benefit from this training, uh, please help us share this training and that would be lovely. So as I mentioned, this is the fourth session and our final session for this uh, learning series. So if you are joining us for the first time, you can actually go up to um, where the title is, like Reinvent Your Life and Career 101 right at Crowdcast. Uh, and if you press on more, you're going to be able to see the other sessions, uh, one to three sessions. We're on the fourth session today. So you can go back, actually, and rewatch some of the training that we've done. We had some amazing uh, turnout of guests and uh, a, a great audience that joined us for the last few weeks. So we started off with a how to start a side hustle you can love training with me, which is a great one to really understand what business you should be starting. Uh, we also had a guest uh, facilitator, Diane Hopkins, help us to turn our expertise and our knowledge into programs and courses. So if you've ever been interested to teach classes or teach uh, less of a one-to-one, -one -one, but more to a one-to-many, uh, more than one person in a group format or a course format, you don't want to miss that training as well. And then last week, we had some amazing guests join us. We had Danny, Pam, and Sophia, who were uh, cubicle crashers, and also some of them are newly corporate escapees. And you got to hear their stories about their escape uh, strategies uh, to apply to your life. And what were sort of the things financially on a mindset level they had to prepare in order to feel brave enough to take that leap. So if you missed that last week, you can go back after this webinar as well and watch session three, because we had an excellent conversation talking all about that and answering some great questions uh, that were submitted by you guys as well. Now, a couple of housekeeping things before we officially get started is that we have a ask a question uh, tab. So this is sort of where I'll check when uh, you have a question that you want me to answer at the end of this webinar. So if you click sort of below the video, there's an ask a question tab and you can submit your questions ahead of time. Now, no question is, uh, you know, not like you can ask anything here, right? This is sort of the point is so that I can help you uh, really move forward with your ideas and, and really move forward with 
uh, the stuck points that you have. Because potentially, you know, a lot of times around fear and uh, resistance of change, there's just a missing gap of information or knowledge. And I want to sort of, you know, jump, bungee jump in here to help you with that so that you're no longer overthinking things. You're no longer sort of getting overwhelmed with where you need to start next. Uh, so be sure to ask me those questions that have been sort of burning in your mind and get that help you need. And I'll definitely check that um, ask a question tab uh, later on in the Q&A after the training is done. There's also a poll there that you can sort of help us uh, get to know where you're at better. So we do these polls to really help us to see where people are at, you know, and we create content and trainings that are going to be really relevant to the main problem that you're feeling. Okay, so these are quite helpful to us to, to know what's your number one obstacle. So that's today's question. What's your number one obstacle standing in the way uh, of starting a business? Um, so I know a lot of people uh, really they'll say it's about not knowing what business idea to start that's one but sometimes people have uh, trouble finding time if they've got families or they have a busy schedule professionally uh, maybe that's a big obstacle uh, that's in between you and the dream that you have uh, maybe it's about fear of money or fear of success even you know what are you giving up in a way to start this business and those are sort of questions that we need to dive into um, or maybe you're not feeling confident about that, about your idea that you've developed. You need a little bit more clarity uh, on what it is that you're selling and what it is that people need to be buying. And you're unsure really how to market or even create uh, your business in a way that's going to feel um, engaging, right? For people to actually want to inquire about that product or service. So whatever that is, uh, please let us know what you feel about that question on that poll uh, to, again, allow us to create better content in the future uh, to answer those very questions for you. Okay. Well, if everyone can see me and hear me, I think Bettina, if you're there and you can hear me and see me, let me know as well so that um, I can start showing uh, the rest of the slides for the training uh, and ensure that uh, you have it on sort of a bigger format. So let me just change to my slides uh, to be, be a little bit bigger so that you can see me. Okay. So that's a little bit bigger of slides. Um, all right. Let me just go back into my PDF here. <clears throat> Okay, if you can see the second slide, that would be lovely to let me know. Um, so today we're going to be learning all about um, not just how the Academy of Cubicle Crashers will help you to reinvent your life and work in 12 months. We're really sharing the framework about what we teach. So whether or not you join this program, um, I think it's a really, really good thing for you to learn what are those necessary steps and stages you should be focusing on depending on where you're at. A lot of people get so overwhelmed with where to start, and I'm hoping that this training will help you to clarify and sort of self diagnose diagnose where you're at and what sort of activities you should actually be focusing on so that you're not wasting time, you know, um, focusing on things that actually, you know, aren't helping you get to that next door, right? And everybody's next door is so different, depending on the questions that you're having, depending on how long you've been working on your ideas, how long you've been mulling over your own cubicle escape plan. Uh, so I'm hoping that this training really helps you to get clear what to sort of almost have boundaries on in your time and your focus of energy so that you can get things feeling more complete, right? Moving forward rather than doing like 10, 15 things at once, which isn't really conducive to your success. Um, so you're in the right place if you're here to really learn um, how to get started on what it is that you need to be doing depending on the stage of business you're in or depending on the stage of questions you're in in your life okay we're going to talk about that in the in the training um, I'm, of course, if you're joining me for the first time here, I'm Lydia Lee, the founder and, and coach at Screw the Cubicle. Uh, I'm the lead facilitator at the Academy of Cubicle Crashers, a community learning experience program that helps you to prepare for your career transition, find your niche and launch your side hustle to start making money with your business. Now, I'm going to be telling you more about the Academy coming up and also more about myself. But if you are interested to learn more about the Academy, we literally have 48 hours left uh, for registrants before we close down the doors uh, and not open it again for another four months. So if you've been interested to get mentorship, guidance and be a part of a small, intimate community to finally get your goals going for your dreams, uh, definitely click on the button below this video. Um, and learn more about the Academy and, and apply to speak to me. Uh, the calls are free. It's very strategic. I spent about an hour with you seeing where you're at, giving you advice about what you need. And if you are a good fit for the Academy, we would love to invite you. If not, at least you get some great advice from me, at least to get started with your goals. So the big message here today is I don't want you to leave your dreams to just wishful thinking. So we just started 2018 right now and a brand new year comes with that, you know, anticipation of new changes that you want to happen in your life. 
And what are your big goals that you have for your life for 2018 and for your work as well? Um, maybe you're desiring to start a business that you've been thinking about. Uh, maybe it's about gaining more freedom in the way that you're choosing to live a lifestyle choice or the way that you're working. Uh, maybe you're tired of experiencing, you know, your life that's just in two week vacation days that you get every year and you want more than that. You want more autonomy over your freedom and your time and the creative choices that you get to have. Um, with your life. Uh, maybe you want to be more in control of how you make a living, right? You want to start choosing your clients. You want to start being uh, consciously really creating uh, the work and a way of earning a living that is conducive to in alignment, right? It, with your lifestyle needs. Maybe you want to stay home a lot more for your kids. Maybe you want to travel more with your life. Uh, and you want to do that more for yourself versus other people's agendas. Uh, and, or, and finally, muster up the courage really to quit that cubicle and really know what it is that you have to uh, be doing. So that you could be here for sort of many different reasons. So if you do have particular goals you're working on this year, please let us know in the chat box um, what your main goals are this year. You know, what has been the burning question uh, that has been on your mind around, you know, going after your dreams? What it is that you think if you were playing detective in your own life, you know, what keeps you up at night? What are the things that you need to focus on that you believe would actually gain uh, traction for you right now to quit your job and start a business? Uh, let us know. <coughs> Sorry about that. A little frog in my throat. Uh, let us know what your big goals are. Um, but your big goals to quit your cubicle, create a business, whatever that is, and take control of your lifestyle doesn't really happen by default. Okay. It doesn't happen like one minute or a day that you're hoping for where this amazing plan is going to hit you in the face, right? We can't live it, leave it to wishful thinking and we can't leave it to chance. You know, we need to actually be consciously looking at what we have to be doing and creating that time and strategy for it. And most importantly, you need a tried and tested strategy. So here's what you're likely feeling right now. Uh, you might be feeling overwhelmed of knowing what that next step is for your life and your career change. You know something needs to change, but you sort of don't know what to start with. I'm not sure if you're there. Um, you might also be feeling you are currently burning out in your career. You're seeing signs of it in your life. Maybe your health is taking a toll. Maybe your family and relationships are taking a bit of a toll. Uh, maybe your happiness is taking a toll, right? You're, you're feeling those signs of burnout. Um, you may be feeling that you don't know what alternative career <coughs> or business you can start. Um, you know you want to make a living. You know you've been paid to do things before, but you don't really know, do I want to do exactly what I did in corporate? Is there a, a way to repurpose those skills to a, a different business? Maybe you're here in that particular stage of feeling. Or maybe you're feeling that your current version of success, you have climbed the corporate ladder, you've gotten the raise, you've gotten the picket fence home, but it's not making you feel any happier with all that money and more possessions and more of that status. Um, you're seeking for something more than that and wanting to redefine your version of happiness and success. Or maybe there's an itch to scratch. A lot of people come to me when they go, you know what, I think I'm meant for bigger things and I want to find out what that is. I just know it's not the thing that I'm doing, right? There's a feeling of uh, almost like an identity, uh, you know, feeling of like what I'm doing right now, this life experience that I am uh, currently living really truly isn't leading me to that impact or that expression, you know, uh, that I, I can feel like, you know what, I'm proud to say that's my line of work, or I'm proud to say I'm putting time and effort into this. Uh, so Maureen on the chat box says, um, She's craving independence, flexibility, control over her life. And freedom is what you're looking for, but you're scared, right? Not to have security uh, that your salary is giving you and not earning enough money is frightening. Totally get that, Maureen. I mean, I'm in, I'm in a very calculated risk sort of person. You know, I'm very risk averse in all sorts of ways. Um, people don't see that in me because they're like, oh, you're doing the thing and you're, you know, in Bali, you're obviously very unconventional. But actually, they were all very, very micro decisions that I've made in the last five years in order for me to get there. And, and the same thing of how I experienced it, Maureen, when I first decided to quit my job, I wasn't going to quit unless I really saw income coming in and really preparing for transition while I'm still working full time so that when I do indeed quit, uh, quit, it doesn't feel like a huge jump off a cliff, right? Many of us are not those sorts of people that have just, you know, the kahunas to do that. You know, most of us need to see evidence. We need to see proof. So Part of what we're going to be teaching you in this webinar is what you need to prepare, actually, while you're still working full time uh, in order to feel safe enough to quit, which I think is um, a much better way to look at it rather than just I'm going to give up everything, uh, you know, shit my pants and then go for it. Right. Which is not sort of how most of us are built. 
Let me just take a quick sip of water. I've been recovering from a bit of a cold, so <coughs> my apologies for having a little bit of a cough today, guys. Okay, so here's what you want instead. You want to be happy with the choices you make with your life, right? You want to know that you're consciously creating that life for yourself. Uh, you want more personal freedom, just like what Maureen said in the chat box, right? More freedom with your life choices and your work choices. Uh, you want to feel financially dependent on yourself, not the system. You know, we all know, we've heard of our own family members, our own friends that have been laid off in the past. You know, the economy sometimes can take a bit of a, a, a dip. Uh, we can't really rely on just one sole way of making a living and relying on the system to be financially accountable to ourselves, right? We need to learn the skill sets and the approach of how we can actually be more responsible for our earning potential. So sometimes starting a business is not just about starting a business. It's really about, you know, equipping yourself with the tools that are necessary that if something happens in your life where you have to quit your job or your job is no longer available for you, or you have to move somewhere for your family, that you know how to actually get to money and financial gain on your own, right? Learning how to freelance, learning how to get clients, learning how to be independent in the way that you make a living. So you're not only attached to the job and then complaining about it, right? When you don't like it, you have much more choices when you have that weapon, you know, to be um, financially dependent on yourself. Uh, you may want to feel sort of purposeful again in your life, right? To feel inspired to create something more purposeful and different with your life. Um, you want to probably have a work life that feels joyful, like the way that you make a living doesn't feel like pulling teeth, you know, doesn't feel like, oh, I can do that, but I don't want to do that to make a living. And that is absolutely a huge piece of our um, happiness, right? We work at a job 40 plus hours a week. And if we don't love our job, even a business, you could end up creating a business you hate, right? That could be very likely as well. And hence why I'm constantly beating the drum of that um integration, you know, of interests, passions and skill sets so that when you are making a living with your business, you're having fun. You're you're knowing the impact that you're making. That is a lot more than money that is going to allow you to feel that momentum and that drive to continue to persevere towards it. Right. Bringing that uh, impact and joy and meaning into your work can absolutely change the way you feel about your life. Um, and what you want instead is, is to see possibility. Right. How can you utilize your strengths, utilize the skills that already exist in your repertoire and use it for a new direction. What is that business you should be starting? What is that body of work that you want to be creating that is going to be an amazing expression of who you are and the value that you can give other people? And value is what people are looking for when it comes to paying you, right? So that is a huge question that has to be answered when it comes to your business. It's not just about what business should I start? But really, what are the problems I'm solving that allows people to receive value? Something that they couldn't do before I came along, some transformation that you're providing that is less obvious than just the job title or the business name, right? Really, truly understanding problems. We'll talk a little bit more about that in this training. Now, for some of you that don't know who I am, hopefully you do if you're coming to this training. Uh, I, as I said, am the corporate escape coach and the founder of Screw the Cubicle. I work primarily with solopreneurs, service-based professionals, people that are really, there's a human behind the business. You're not drop shippers. You're not sort of like e-commerce people that don't have an emotional attachment to your business. I work really with people that want to be in the business of helping, right? They're wanting to start businesses that help other humans. They are like directly connected to the business and they are the asset of the business. It's a very different type of business to build when it comes to that kind of business. So that's the primary type of model and people that I help. Um, I myself quit my job in 2013 after having my meltdown, you know, having my burnout crisis during a business trip in Moscow uh, that really activated my questions around what was happiness to me? Why was my health taking a toll to make six figures? And was this truly the version of success I wanted? And definitely went through an identity crisis myself, you know, of judgment and uh, what I believed, you know, I needed to do versus what I wanted to do. And I had to go through that same emotion of transition. And that's how Screw the Cubicle was really born from that place as well. Me trying to help myself, really, <coughs> in 2013. Um, 
Since then, I've helped hundreds of professionals repurpose their gifts into business they love. This is sort of my sweet spot. Uh, I'm really uh, great at skill spotting. I know how to turn people's like existing gifts into something new. That is something that is sort of the primary thing that I do for most people that are coming in with no ideas or too many ideas, right? Too multi-passionate. I don't know where to start. Um, this is sort of my genius zone, you know, helping people really develop business ideas that feel meaningful, but also are valuable based on the skills that they have. And sometimes to actually combine passions and combine skill sets so they're not giving up on things, but they're building uh, this much more, um, you know, valuable asset in their business instead of having to choose between their skills. Um, I really believe that doing great work and having a location independent business can exist without sacrificing quality and intimacy. You know, so digital businesses are sort of what is my jam, right? Helping you to gain more of your freedom in space and time uh, by helping you turn your, your work into more of a digital format and to be helping. I mean, all of you are here from different parts of the world, you know, attending this webinar. Um, we don't, you know, intimacy and quality can still be included and incorporated, uh, you know, into your life without it being physically, you know, you physically in a room with someone. But it does take a lot of creative ways for you to build intimacy and building community, which is so important in the business of helping. So if you guys label yourselves as like, you know, a coach or, or, or some sort of service based provider, a consultant, an advisor, a mentor, a therapist, whatever it is that you believe you are, you intimacy is really going to be a huge part of your business. And that's what's going to be really leaked in your marketing is a way that you show off your business, all that super important. And using the digital tools to allow people to do that or allow people to see you that way is going to be really, really important. One of my big goals in 2018 is to create these helpful communities that utilizes the collective intelligence of people to do bigger things it, because it really takes a village. You know, uh, we can never do big things alone. I definitely didn't do it alone. Uh, and I find that most people try to do it alone because we sort of don't want to put anything out there until we're perfectly uh, you know, aligned with our business ideas and we feel really confident, but confidence is really built from feedback, you know, from having people actually give you feedback about your ideas, let you know if that works and let you know if things have been tested and validated. We'll talk a lot about validation today. Um, but having people around you to give you that support on an emotional level, but also on a, um, you know, practical and professional level, it's going to really help you move forward a lot faster uh, than doing it alone. So we do this at the Academy of Cubicle Crashers. Uh, we help you to create a plan to quit your job, but we also help you to create that plan to start a business that leverages your skills because transition and change isn't a solo game. You really cannot be the person experiencing your life and experiencing all your fears and obstacles and be an observer, right, of your own life and be able to coach yourself, you know, out of doubt. Uh, and procrastination and perfectionism, right? We need people to help us see the blind spots because at the end of the day, you need support because you only know what you know and you can be your own worst critic, right? Self-sabotage is very real. Uh, I've seen it happen to myself and to other people. Um, and you're gonna have blind spots about what you think is possible, you know, for yourself if you've never done it before. You're only looking, you know, you almost have like an echo chamber of your own ideas and thoughts, especially if you don't have people around you giving you evidence of that something else could be different for your life, right? And you can truly expedite your learning by getting help from people that are a little bit ahead of you, right? Mentors and expert a bit of ahead of you. And also people who are in your stage, right? People who are working on the same questions. People are working on the same uh, areas of the stage they're, they're in so that you don't feel alone in doing it. And that really helps you to be accountable um, and, and really focused, you know, on um, not checking out before it's too early to check out. You know, you're doing it together uh, for, um, you know, in order to reach the goals that you really want to have. You're not just talking about it. You're really creating the action to execute it. And we really need to do it together. So today I'm going to be sharing what we do at the Academy. So a lot of people that might be here have been maybe thinking about is the Academy um, of Cubicle Crashers the right thing for me to do? Is it going to really help me, um, you know, achieve the goals that I want to achieve? So I want to be sharing that framework of how we help corporate prisoners or people that are professionals uh, to go from that stage to being a thriving entrepreneur. So these are sort of the, a, a lot of the things that we do in our framework. Uh, we help to shift your mindset and per perspective change by preparing you first, right, about what to expect in your own life, what things need to change in your environment in order to even be prepared mentally to go after that change. 
Um, a big part of what we do at the Academy is to build the foundations for your work, right? I'll talk a bit more about what I mean by foundations, uh, but we really can't develop a business for you unless you truly understood what are the ingredients in your body of work that makes you different, that makes you a sought after person to want to do that people want to work with, you know? To make sure that you have an offer to sell that is also aligned with the values and beliefs that you share about your work uh, and also a process, right? You're building almost like a bit of a framework for yourself. Just like we have a framework for how what we teach, uh, you will have a framework about what you share, you teach, you coach on or what you consult on, right? You can't sort of go on a free for all. Uh, I hope, you know, I, I cross my fingers and hope whoever I get on a call with gets help. There's a plan and a structure to actually the journey you create for your clients. And that's your foundations of your work. Um, after you do your foundations, you know, the next stage is really about testing and validating ideas. I'll talk more about this as well in the training, why that's super important, how you can actually do this without things like a brand and a website and actually get good at being good rather than looking good. Uh, and that's going to prepare you for launching and creating better connections, creating better conversations, you know, around your work that isn't going to feel like salesy marketing, but really feels like this open call to an audience that really wants to hear what you have to share. So for the last five years, I have helped hundreds of professionals reinvent their lives and careers. And so I know a thing or two about what obstacles potentially stand in your way and how you can start really creating a bigger life that you were meant to lead. So if you've been tired of doing it all alone and trying to figure out what those right steps are, to get started in your career transition plan, you know, know the right business to start and launch a side hustle to escape your nine to five. This is really what we're going to be covering uh, today as well. So you really need to know what are the right things to focus and act on that is going to be in the stage that you're currently in. So you, you're, you're likely feeling overwhelmed because you don't know where to start to be focused on the right activities to really get that clarity or the results that you need to feel confident. Maybe you've been spread out learning all the time, doing a bunch of courses and just never being able to execute when it comes to your own ideas. Um, you need to know the right things to focus on based on your stage, because if you don't know where you're at and the questions that you truly need to answer first, you might be skipping steps, right? You might be going straight into marketing activities when actually you should be doing foundational work. So we're going to outline what those stages are so you can self-diagnose. Um, and ultimately, you need a plan, right, that allows you to see like little wins, little milestones along the way of what you need to complete so that you can see traction. So you're not just celebrating when you launch a business because there's actually quite a lot of benchmarks and milestones to hit before that sort of ultimate goal is created for you. And you want to feel that pleasure, you know, of reaching mini goals, actually, or mini milestones or benchmarks ahead of time so that you know that you are actually on the right path. You're actually revealing to yourself these bigger doors before you sort of officially uh, get a, a thriving business on the go. And you know, focus really looks good on you. Focus is what helps people get going forward rather than actually start to be busy, right? Just busy doing all the things, but not focus on doing one or two things that's actually gonna be leading you to the results that you want. And, and most of the time, focus is about being less focused on the shiny. Most people end up going straight to like building a website, you know, gaining a list of an email list, right? And that's actually not usually the first um, most positive and effective activities to start, right? A big point of why I want to make this here is that a lot of people that are starting business for the first time needs to actually focus on being good versus looking good, right? And that's the what's really going to lead you to con the confidence you need to talk about your work and know what you're offering in your work, because it's about that mastery in being good and knowing what it is that makes you good and actually practicing being good by actually working with people ahead of time before even your website and your email list is built, because you truly want to know what is that value I provide? How do people experience my value? And how do I improve this thing before I officially go and launch? And you can do all this when you're still working in a full-time job, right? This is what you're experimenting with in your side hustle. Um, and when you're focused on looking good, uh, sorry, feeling good uh, and being good in your work versus looking good, what you're actually doing is you're constructing the foundations of your house first, right? I like to use the analogy of a house, right? Before, like if you build a house, you're gonna not hire the interior designer right away, right? You don't wanna decorate the house. There's no house to decorate. And those are things like marketing and you know Instagram ads or whatever it is that you're thinking you need to learn. Um, you're decorating before you're actually constructing the frame of your house, knowing how many rooms you're going to build, you know, like it's that foundation of that house solid 
so that a gust of wind that comes isn't going to blow it over. You know, and that's what your framework and your foundation says. You know, you got to build that house first before you can even learn how to sell that. Right. And, and that's going to be uh, the biggest work that you're going to be doing, knowing your business enough on a deep level, what it is that you're providing of value uh, and knowing who you're serving. Why is it that people should even care and why you should matter before you actually go into more of the decoration marketing zone um, of the business? And also a big important stage that I always like to talk about is there's a preparation stage before you even get into the business stuff, because actually you could have the best business plan or someone gives that to you or strategically someone can help you with that. Um, if you yourself on a human level isn't prepared mentally and have opened up your perspective on change, it's really going to be super hard for you to go after that plan, even when it's right in front of you, because you're going to start seeing problems rather than seeing opportunities, right? So the first thing is we have to understand What's the real reason you're quitting, right? What's that motivation that's going to be a bigger reward than the fears and obstacles that could get in the way? What's the real reason to quit and start a business? That is actually a really, really big thing that if you can get that, and that's what the business is all about for you, um, you're going to get a lot more of those assets or that pleasure in other aspects of your life, right? There's a big why all of us have. Uh, for me, you know, when I started a business, it wasn't just truly for a profitability, uh, profitability sort of reason. A lot of it was that I, on a personal level, am someone that didn't want to lie on my deathbed knowing that I didn't get a chance to express my opinions, to express my freedom of speech, to be able to do work that I feel good about. You know, there's something around my meaning around being a human that had to be aligned with like something I'm contributing to. I, I couldn't wake up in the morning and do any work unless I truly believed in the outcome that it was providing. So meaning and purpose was a really big, a big reason of my why to quit. You know, that was a lot bigger than money for me. And also really at this prep stage of understanding, you know, the reason to pursue your business is also knowing the real cost of remaining where you are. So if nothing changes 10 years from today and you were looking back at your life today. What would you say 10 years later about your life? What would you feel? What would you be experiencing at that point? And that can help you to forecast what's the real cost that it's not even about money or fear of failure. You know, some real costs are sometimes the regret, you know, the, the, the missed opportunities of not actually taking those inspiration and instinctive feelings you currently have about starting something different and not taking that reins and going after it, right? That can feel a lot more costly sometimes in the future. You know, regret can be quite a poisonous long-term curse rather than, uh, fear of failure, which you can pick yourself back up again and do it over again. You know, so at this prep stage, it's really about defining your motivation to quit. You're but defining your motivation to keep going with a business and starting a business despite the fear. Um, and what's that 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 motivating factor that you have to remember every time uh, that you sort of get tired or de-energized from keeping going? Um, a big part of the prep stage is also setting the stage in all these different areas of your life, right? Money is always a really big uh, uh, issue for a lot of people. We have to get good with our financials. Uh, we need to know what money we should be saving for our business, <coughs> what we have to be budgeting for our lives in order to take our leap. We have to look at our numbers uh, quite uh, clearly in order to feel better about what it is that we have to earn on a monthly basis to keep our heads afloat, right? And we, and we don't know those numbers and we assume that is just our salary that is what we have to make all the time from our business, uh, you know, a matching salary anyway, from what we're used to. We sometimes that number may not be true. That wasn't true for me. I, I had a six figure business, uh, sorry, a six figure job. And it didn't actually mean I had to have a six figure business in order to quit. I had to really understand my uh, life expenses. I had to understand cutting, you know, expenses for my life in order to make that number more comfortable for myself. So a big part of what we do at the Academy is helping people prepare for that, right, financially. Um, environment, environment preparation is also important. These are your communities, your time management, um, your relationships, you know, who knows about your dreams, who you're rolling your dreams that again, allows you to make that dream real for yourself. So that, um, crafting of time, crafting of space, talking to your spouse, you know, uh, setting an environment of healthy living, uh, or being around people that inspire you, right? All that's super important to actually be developed in your environment to allow you to thrive. There's a belief preparation as well that we need to look at, you know, before we go into business stuff, like what are you believing is possible for your life or not possible for your life that we have to speak to? You know, these fears are coming for a reason. Don't ignore them. 
But in those fears, there, there are, there's clarity of answers. Like there's, if a fear is saying to you, you know, I'm really scared that I'm not good at the thing that I'm doing. What that tells you is that you need to create an experience for yourself that allows you to feel better about being good at what you're doing. So that might be actually testing your skill sets for free to start if to change that belief system to change that hey if i start actually having a little bit of evidence working with some real humans that's going to make that pain or that fear less of a fear mongering monster right so what is telling you something to do about it right so there's actually a lot of answers in fear if you listen to it and not and utilize it as a way of finding out what is that next thing and activity that you have to clear out for yourself in order for that fear to be a little bit more dissipated so setting those conditions, right? What's that support you need around those fears? What are some of the, the default behaviors that you really um, you know, know that you do when you get afraid? And what's that buffer? What are those conditions you have to set, whether it's getting a mentor, getting an accountability buddy, uh, or outsourcing that question to someone else uh, can allow you to know, hey, there's still a solution here, even if I get scared. It just may not be the solution coming from me, but I know that I'm going to be responsible of finding that answer for myself or getting help when I need it. And as I said, creating time and space for transition is super important. Um, you're working full time, potentially. You have to be consciously creating even an hour or two hours or three hours a week in order to work on your dreams, right? Because if not, it's just not going to happen. It's just never going to happen, right? So that preparation of setting that stage for knowing what blocks of time every week, every month, you're actually going to be um, invested into your business is going to be really important to go to those times of uh times of 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 block times right like it's almost like going to a part-time job you show up for it right you, you're not going to not show up for a job so you have to create the serious time blocks for your schedule in order to get going on your plans right so this initial mindset approach uh preparation in the financial environment fears and believe uh and and time management is going to be important for you to think about now before you actually start thinking about your business plans and your marketing strategies after you look at your sort of preparation of that then we we can move on to stage one which is you've heard me talk about foundations one of the biggest stages um you know in uh the development of your work and your body of work and, and your business in order to feel really clear this first stage is important to get real clarity on because your foundations is almost like this heartbeat it's like a GPS of your business. This includes your values, right? What people rely on you for, what they can expect from you when they hire you, what they can expect when they see your brand. And it also requires you to create offers that people want to buy. You've validated those offers. You've thought about those offers. You've researched those offers. You've interviewed people on the problems that you're looking to solve. Um, so in this stage, there is a bulk of customer research that needs to be done. So if you don't understand what business to start or what problems you think you're solving, or maybe you don't have an offer yet to sell in your business, very likely you haven't been talking to enough people. You haven't been curating actually a handful of ideal customers to speak to, to interview, to pick their brain on, to offer an exchange of a conversation, uh, to understand the problems your ideal customers suffer with and how they, themselves articulate their goals and pain points knowing what your customers are talking about what are they verbalizing what keeps them up at night um, is going to actually be quite helpful in knowing what you need to create as an offer to sell because that's going to answer directly to the pain points and problems that they're, that they're needing to have so if you're wondering am i in stage one of foundations is this the stage i'm in here's sort of what you might be saying you might be saying i don't know what business i should start or what i'm good at uh you might be saying i'm really unclear about how to articulate to people uh, what people would pay for if they hired me uh you might be saying i'm not confident in the steps or process i would take to work with my customers if they hired me i don't know where to start with them uh you might be saying i don't know if people will buy what i want to sell maybe i i do think i know what that idea is but i don't yet know if people will actually buy it's all in my head um, and you might also be saying, I haven't properly spoken to real humans about what they need help with. I'm just, I'm just simply guessing, you know? Uh, and if that's what you're saying right now, you know, let me know in the chat box if this is where you may be at. Uh, and this may be the stage that you are in, okay? It's, it's the foundation stage. You have to actually clear, clarify first before you move on to other stages. So the key activities to focus on on the foundation stage, uh, even if you have a website now, or even you've gone into marketing, maybe you're not hitting the mark because you actually haven't done this stage uh, clearly yet, right? This key activities uh, to focus on here is you do really need to know your strengths. What are your superpowers? And your superpowers are your strongest skills and gifts to share. 
right? That you actually like giving and is valuable to others. It's not just something you add on to your business because you're good at it, but you're adding it on because it's actually really, really effective to be used to leverage in order to get your customers to results. Um, this also, this stage, uh, you have to understand what your business values is all about, right? What, what are things that you refuse to do and what are things that you can be relied upon to do, right? What, what do you want to be known for helping people do? What's the true purpose of your work, right? Instead of just saying, oh, I'm an editor I'm, or I'm a writer or, or I'm a web designer instead of this one trick pony title, you know, what it is, that, what are you truly, truly, truly transforming or removing the pain of for a lot of people, digging deeper into those problems that's behind that job title or that business title. Um, another key activity is being able to get clear on who it is that you're serving, who are your ideal customers, not just by age group or demographic or they male or female. That's not as important as really understanding like what are the shared values your customers have with you? What is the real ultimate goals they have? Uh, and what is their approach that they believe in that is really similar to the approach that you know you have around solving that problem for them, right? And, and in order to know solutions that you need to create in your business, you need to know what those urgent problems are that your customers actually have been actively seeking to solve and want to pay for it. What are these ready clients? Who are these ready clients and what do they look like? Where will you find them and how you need to speak to them in order to engage them to actually inquire about your services or your products? Um, you on a personal level will also need to be focused on clarity on what's the direction of my work? Where am I? Where are the boundaries of my work? Do I want to do all the things or is it like I stop at a particular stage after <clears throat> helping my clients and they sort of graduate from me after the stage? Where do I want to start and stop? with my customers, right? And knowing your big message, knowing what it is, like almost like a, um, what's that ripple effect of your work? What is your clients and customers able to do now that they weren't able to do because you showed up in their life, right? What's that real purpose behind your work that is more than just what they came to you for, you know, um, that needs to be clarified so that your big message really shines through, not just in your offers, but every time you're interviewed by somebody, every time you have a blog post, every time you put a podcast out, there's a big message that's behind every piece of content that you're putting out there that can sometimes uh, be more than just the thing you're selling, right? It's, a, it's like, if you do this, like for example, with Screw the Cubicle, yes, it's about launching businesses and getting more financial accountability through a business, but a big message around Screw the Cubicle is you know, this sense of like living life with a full sense of self-expression. Right. The freedom to actually choose. Right. Things that you want to be contributing to uh, that may or may not be business stuff all the time. But having that courage and confidence to actually choose things that you want to contribute to, things that you really want to belong in. Um, and you're not afraid to be judged, you know, and, 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 and that's a huge part of what I teach behind the message of my work. It's always about the human behind the business rather than all the business technical bits, you know, or, or business practices all the time. And that's what Screw the Cubicle is really known for. OK, so these are the key activities to focus on if you are in this stage of your foundations. Now, what are the big outcomes, a big milestone? Every stage that I'm going to be talking about today has like a milestone. This is sort of like what each stage is leading you to reveal for you, right? So um, the milestone to reach here is to create an offer in the foundation stage, right? It's a bigger value for your time by packaging your gifts. It's not like a dollars for hour trade, right? And part of that is you need to create a framework, a step-by-step -step process of what it is is the journey that you take with your clients to get them from A to B. Right. Where do they start? Where they start? What's the starting point of, of when they're ready to work with you? And, and when is that time that they're finished with you? What needs to happen with them in their results, in their outcomes, in their milestones in order for you to say, yep, you are ready to move on from me. Right. So there's a process or a framework around your work, uh, which is also what I call a creation of an experience. You're ultimately creating an experience for your clients, like a journey. You know, in order for them to know, hey, this is an awesome piece of value I'm paying for rather than by your hourly time. Um, creating an offer, as I said, also involves you knowing the ideal person to work with so that you're creating that offer specifically for that person, not helping everybody in the planet. It's really being clear on after that market research to know, like, what is that thing that this person is truly like on a common level with most people that fit under this avatar or this ideal person profile? 
these are the common problems that they come with. And I need to answer to that. And that becomes my framework. That becomes my step to step process, right? That journey to get them to the results that they want. So this helps you to create value when you can package yourself, when you can create an offer that is not just an hourly rate trade, uh, it's going to give you much more customers that get to better results by buying something bigger, right? A bigger experience with you rather than just an hourly rate where they can get like a micro, you know, result rather than a full result of what your process and journey can actually take them to. Okay. So if you haven't created an offer yet, you don't know yet how to price yourself. You don't know yet. Um, what are, is that step-by-step -step process? This is the first stage of foundations and, and, and benchmark of an offer that you need to be working towards. Now, then we get into stage two after foundations. And if you're clear on that, you know, your offer, you know who you're serving, you have done your market research of interviews, you really truly understand the problems that you want to solve. Um, you need to be validated. You need to feel that, Hey, not only the answers for my business coming from me, it's also coming from me performing this offer, right? Being able to do the work that I said, I want to be paid for and actually doing it like for real. Right. Um, Getting into the market and validating the idea with a target group you want to serve is a necessity. So if you sort of take this approach uh, of like a mad scientist in a lab, right, uh, where you're like sort of testing out different concoctions, different uh, combinations of offering that value in your offer and really going out there, and introducing that idea to real people. Right. It's like you could call that your MVP stage, right, a, a most viable product stage. Uh, it could be a beta test stage is what I call it for this validation stage. Um, and really you're, you're, you're testing out the process that offer that journey, that framework you just created and making sure it does indeed work when you actually play it out with another human, right? So whether you're a coach, a web designer, a writer, whatever you do, there's a process, there's a method to the madness about what you do to lead people to results. And yes, it could look amazing and awesome on paper, but it's not until you perform it with a real client that you really start to see what are the gaps of things that you have to refine and improve on? What are the things, that, how you explain certain things to your clients might change based on feedback? <coughs> You're really um, using this validation stage to improve your offer before you you officially go out there to launch and market your business. Um, hiding behind a computer, and trying to validate an idea doing that isn't enough, right? Nothing really compares to working with people, you know, like truly, truly directly, right? Um, talking to people on the phone, you know, walking through them through um, a process of how to get to results, right? The insights you can get from these real conversations, real beta experiences is truly going to lead you uh, to being confident about what you have to offer. So you might be in stage two, of validation or needing this really clear for yourself if you're saying these things, right? You're saying, I need confidence in knowing that my offer that I've created uh, hits the mark. It is valuable to people. I'm not guessing that it's valuable. People tell me that it's valuable. Um, maybe you're saying, I haven't worked with enough customers, enough humans in any capacity to feel that this thing works. You know, it looks great as a sales page, but um, I don't really know. Do I really get people results? Not sure, right? That You, you might be saying that. Um, you might also be saying, you know what, I don't, I, I feel really unconfident like marketing my website because I don't really have social proof. I don't have any testimonials to show about my work. And that can tell you that you're in the stage of validation and you need to create a beta lab first um, before you actually start marketing your website or writing blogs or any of those things. You know, you need to start working with a handful of people to get those testimonials before you launch. Um, or maybe you're feeling I'm not confident charging people for my work. And if you're saying that very likely, uh, you know, you don't know what to charge. I don't even know if I should charge because you haven't yet again received that 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 real feedback that's necessary uh, to feel that the process of what you've created works. So what are the key activities to focus on at this stage? As I mentioned, when you need these questions answered in terms of validation, confidence, knowing your journey works, you got to create a beta test to validate what you're going to be teaching, what you're going to be coaching on, uh, what you're going to consult on, right? This could be in forms of testing out a webinar training. You could be taking on one-on-one -on -one clients for like the first few months. You could be running a group workshop. A lot of my clients do that. They take on a group program, test it out, you know, with like five people to start making sure that the exercises they're creating and making sure that the content that they're creating really hits the mark or running really test group programs, right? It doesn't have to be workshops. It could be like live group programs that um, could be digital or physical where people meet you uh, every week for a certain amount of time so that you're really, really involved 
in the results, right? And knowing, knowing what to improve on in your offer uh, that maybe didn't, you know, was as smooth as the first time round to go through it, but you're going to refine that as you go. Um, in this stage, you're also going to be working with real humans to understand that value. You're constantly asking them after you're done a session or after you're done a particular step in your business, like, how do they feel about that step? Did they get clear on that? Were they more confident working with you than doing it alone? And how can that improve and restructure your offer or your framework uh, before you go into market? So a huge part of this stage of validation is being able to have the capability to listen. Listen to how people respond to how you teach right? Listen to how people um, digest, right? And absorb what you coach on or what you offer in your service so that you can sort of go, okay, that was really helpful to my client. I need to do more of that piece, you know, or they needed a template here, or they needed an exercise to really bring theory into practice there. So you're really doing all this before you go into market or start to charge people for it and gain that confidence you need before officially launching. Uh, majority of people that's ever joined my community programs or a one-on-one -on -one coaching program, they had to do this. It was almost non-negotiable. They really couldn't even go into marketing and know what to say about their offer until they got it really from a human that can give them that feedback, right? This is something that a lot of people skip because it's sort of not a sexy stage of branding and marketing, but it's actually such a beneficial stage of getting clearer and mastering the work that you do by going through this uh, beta lab. So in this stage, the milestone to and the benchmark to meet in stage two is the focus of being good versus looking good, right? So you have to believe that people will invest with you through this experience of a beta. Um, and you don't need a website to test your offer. You simply need uh, a laser focus on, on actually pitching, right? Finding those customers ahead of time. Could be three of them to start, potentially. I always like the number of three. Uh, to give you that variety of different customers that fall under the same category of that avatar to test out, you know, whether this works with different, different personalities, different needs at times, uh, and, and seeing where your offer can hit the mark for all, all sorts of people, right? And you might start with a small group, right? Your ba is, the beta lab doesn't have to be very big. Um, you want to think about creative ways to do that beta lab. Some people do it in a form of live meetups. Some people do it like half digital, you know, half live. Some people do it as like pre-recorded material and then they have live calls, you know, uh, to workshop some of those steps that they've recorded in those learning videos. So you can get really creative about how you want to approach this beta lab um, in order to get you the answers you need that your offer really works. A really big benefit of this stage as well is getting testimonials, right? Getting testimonials ahead of time, which will create that confidence you need. So you truly know what people are saying about your work. So when you do marketing, whether it's on Instagram or, you know, on uh, uh, social media or what's the next blog post you want to write to engage people to watch your content in order to, you know, convert into a customer by watching that content, um, you need to know what it is that you need to create as content and you need to know those pain points. So when you work with real humans in your beta lab, you're going to start to realize and be very aware where people struggle, where people have a hard time moving forward, you know? And then that is actually involved, uh, allows you to really see the content that you have to create in your blogs and in your, you know, marketing activities that's going to lead people uh, to, to going, yep, that's the problem I have. I can't wait to read more about it, you know? And in time, convert them into customers. So if you guys are in this validation, a lot of people skip this stage, as I say, if you are listening right now and you think you're in this stage, I would love to hear how you think you can create a beta lab. Uh, what do you think you need to find out in this validation stage that's going to allow you to feel confident, confident about the offer that you've created? Now, that brings us to stage three, visibility. So after foundations are created, after you've performed a, a validation beta lab stage, you can then be ready for visibility, right? Uh, once you've tested that offer you have created, people need to know about that offer now, right? Marketing is a big focus on this stage. Now, to be profitable, you need to be seen. And understanding how you market that plays to your strengths, that proves your credibility, that gets you in front of the right audience is going to be the key focus in this stage. And consistent effort of marketing and communication really matters here. As people are just getting to know your brand, right? Right now, no one knows you exist. You're building traction. You're building a brand awareness, right? Uh, and starting to educate people what you're really known for and what you can um, 
what they can quickly really identify that you're an expert about. They're not unclear about what it is that you help with. Um, and they know what problems that you solve. They even know your approach to solve those problems that might be different than your competitor or different than someone who has a very similar business to you. So if you're in the stage of visibility and sort of brand awareness, uh, this is what you may be saying at this stage. You might be saying, I need more people to know that I exist. I think I have this kick-ass offer. I know what it feels like to work with people, but I just need more people. You know, I just need more people to know that I exist. Um, maybe you're saying I'm creating all this marketing efforts, like I'm here, I'm there, I'm doing all this on these platforms, but I'm feeling I'm all over the place and I'm doing a lot of things, but it doesn't feel like it's amounting to anything. You know, maybe you're like on all the platforms and you're like pushing out content constantly, but just not getting any anybody engaging in your content. Uh, you might be saying I'm not finding as many ideal customers as I would like. Right. Like you have here and there by luck, you might have someone coming into you, to your uh, you know, business, but it's not strategic. It's sort of like you're wait, you're on a wait and see rather than this really um, conscious strategic approach of how you're going to be inviting people into your business. Um, maybe you're also saying that you don't have a structure in how you market. Like every week you sort of look into your social media or what blog post to write. And you're sort of just doing it on the fly. Right. You're not there's nothing that is strategic or it makes sense for people to say yes, you know, to um, to signing up or giving you their email or building um, or letting you build that subscriber list. People are just reading and not really subscribing. Right. That's that may be what you might be saying if you fall under this stage that you have to be working on. So in the visibility stage. Here's the key activities you need to be focusing on if you're here. You have to be seen by your ideal customer. This, is, this might take the effort of knowing um, what partnerships that you have to be creating, right? Someone else with an email list that you want and how you can pitch guest blogs or you can pitch expertise, right? Uh, in a webinar training or a video format, whatever it is, to allow yourself to be uh, exposed to another audience, right? That someone else has that you can sort of tap into. Um, you might be in the activity to be seen by your ideal customers to be building that brand awareness. How are you going to prove yourself to this audience? How are you going to say, hey, before you pay money to join whatever it is that I'm offering or to pay for the offer that I you know, am selling, how can I prove to you in, you know, like just like this webinar you're here for, you're learning through something without paying for it, but getting a taste about what it is that you would have been getting mentorship on if you were to work with me. Right. Um, how it is. How can you offer like taster marketing activities instead of just a bunch of content all the time? How can you truly give away answers? How, you, how can you give your customers some wins ahead of time before you actually sell them anything? Right. Some key activities to focus on here is also, yes, creating content, creating that brand awareness around content. But you got to create content that matters. Not just what's going on with your day, not just an online journal, not what you think you, you have to be talking about, but what are sort of those, you know, um, clear struggle points that you've developed in your, you know, that you've already been told in your beta lab or through interviews with your customers, that these are the sorts of content that they would want to read. Here's the sort of problems that they want to get solved. And that actually allows you to map out your content plan for the year and not actually have to worry about what you're going to write about every single month, right? That might be what you should be working on, a content plan strategy rather than a by default strategy of what inspires you every week. Um, in this stage, you might also be crafting a strategy. This is what you need to be focusing on, crafting a strategy to convert in an interested audience to buying customers. And everybody's strategy will be different. Some people are better teachers. Some people are better at one-on-one -on -one calls. Uh, some people are better at um, you know, giving away a video course as a way of engaging and teaching <coughs> to give people an opt-in um, to give them that taster before they convert into buying customers. Let me just take a sip of water. So that strategy is almost like, you know, you've heard of the word opt-ins or lead magnets. Um, but what it is is that you're solving an immediate pain point. So all of you are, that, are, that are thinking about what can I give away? What can I do to give away my credibility and give away a free gift so that people have a taster? You want to think about what is that first initial pain point your customers usually show up with? What's the most common question they have? What is the thing that you keep asking, be, you're, you keep being asked over and over again, you know, like a broken record 
You know, what is your customers usually complaining about to start with? That is the giveaway that you give away most. So for example, for Screw the Cubicle, one of the biggest pain points for most people, most commonly that come to me first is, I don't know what business to start. That's always the first pain point for most people. So a lot of my giveaways is around that topic, how to get to that business idea, how to utilize your strengths and leverage your skills to build a business idea, because I truly know that is the biggest pain point. So a lot of my giveaways, my workshops, my webinars, all go under this theme. So I want you to start thinking about if you're in this stage, what can you give away in your business right now that is the initial pain point that you can solve, that you can <coughs> give them a small win around or clarity around in order to, for them to be interested in more about what you have to offer. But what is that first pain point to give them that win? And this is gonna allow you to build credibility and trust, okay, to give them that to start. And then they're going to be hungry to go, what else? What more? Now that I've solved this, you know, thing that's been keeping me up at night, I want to know what I can do about that now. They're more engaged they're more motivated to continue to want to work with you and, and do more with you if you can at least solve this initial pain point, right? So that <coughs> taster is going to be super important. Uh, the milestone for this stage of visibility, stage three, is to create better conversations in your business market. Because Marketing is simply a conversation. Marketing is not just tactics or Facebook ads or funnels. It really is about creating better conversations to be able to create invitations to do more and to engage and to converse with your dream clients. Confident, organic conversations is what is going to lead people from interested to buying. So if you find yourself like trying to learn about Facebook ads or something to learn something to learn about sort of digital strategy, I would actually really encourage you to get real with actually being more manual marketing, like actually inviting people to get on the phone with you, inviting people to come on trainings that's a little bit more intimate where you can actually have real conversations with people. Those activities are so much more effective to lead to paying clients than you would trying to invest in Facebook ads because even if you get people subscribing, they may never engage because they never know who you are, right? Getting on the phone with people, giving people a powerful conversation when you first start your business is actually going to be the best activity that feels like a little bit more like hard labor to begin with, but the conversion of trust and relationship building is actually really what you need to build a, con a confident and loyal brand. Um, in this stage, you also wanna be learning how to speak uh, to your clients in the language that they're speaking in, not jargon, not not saying, you know, woo woo things that are sort of vague, but really like when you know what your customers are talking about behind closed doors, really know what, what they're complaining about to their friends and their spouse, you are using those same words in order to market your business or your content. A lot of these activities in your marketing uh, stage here of visibility is that you're actually, like I said, solving these small problems before people buy. You're truly giving a blog post that gives people a solution. Maybe it's a downloadable tool that assists that uh, webinar, or sorry, that, that blog content. Instead of just a bunch of content, you're giving away a tool, a template, a workbook, something that really solves the problem so that they really, really, really built that trust with you before they buy, right? And none of this has to be feeling salesy or sleazy, you know, a lot of it is like, how can I truly help you in, in a, in, with no conditions, you know, um, so that if you are in that ready stage to invest in yourself, it's going to be a no brainer for you to hire me, right? What can you give away? And everybody's visibility um, plan will be different. Some people, like I said, are better teachers. They're focusing more on teaching capability. So they might run more webinars. They might do more trainings as their visibility plan and not as much things on like video or podcasts. And then some people are really great at like showcasing, you know, evidence. Like they might bring on guest speakers. They might actually interview people in a podcast series uh, because they, they, they're really good at curating, right? The right individuals or um, guest interviewees in order to prove a point, right? In order to showcase them, the great host of that conversation. And then that becomes maybe your visibility plan, you know, using interviews or using influencers as a way of marketing your purpose and your, your uh, inviting people into your business. So it's not about doing all of that, but it's about picking one or two visibility strategies that's actually going to bring you more of a better effort, right? To invite those clients than actually spreading yourself too thin and having like a podcast, a YouTube channel, a Periscope account, like, you know, it's too much. 
So here is where we need to find out what is your style of influence? How do you usually communicate best? If some people are introverts and they don't want to be on camera, don't do video. That's not the only way to get traction, you know, in visibility. But you need to know what is your personality type. You need to know what is your most natural way of communication in order to actually pick the right platforms or visibility strategies that align with that. Then you're actually going to do it and you're not going to feel a bit like a fraud doing it. Okay. How many of us do that sometimes? And we just try to be someone else and then it ends up being a lot more work, right? That we want to do. And then we're not motivated to do it at all. Um, a big outcome that's going to happen, a big benchmark and milestone to hit as well uh, in the vis visibility stage is about building genuine relationships with intimacy, right? And it's not a numbers game. It's not about building your list to hundreds of thousands of people, but it's actually building a list of people that actually truly believe in your work. Um, you don't want people to join your list if they're just sort of wishy-washy. You know, so your opinions really matter. Uh, your approach of revealing those opinions and point of view in your content or your giveaways, all that is going to filter out the people that don't want to do it the way that you do it. OK, and that's great because you're not going to be, you know, not every person on the planet will be an ideal client. So it's not a numbers game. It's about recruiting quality leads and quality people into your business um, versus, you know, large numbers of people. So as I said, organic marketing, real conversation with people, giving away stuff with real time uh, will be your focus instead of trying to develop a funnel or the best email strategy in order to do that. Very likely your success is going to be dependent on <coughs> how many people you are talking to every day, how many real powerful conversations you're giving away in this beginning stage of your business in order to build that loyalty and trust and doing that slowly. So building a brand that people trust through these powerful conversations, through the invitation of these powerful conversations is going to be important for visibility um, because it's really designing an experience for your tribe and community. You are ultimately not building a list of subscribers. You're building a tribe. You're building a place for people to come to, to be safe enough to voice their need for support. You're, connecting them with other people that are just like them. You are almost like that tribe leader to sort of say, yeah, I'm the one, you know, helping you with mentorship, but I'm not the only one with all the answers, right? Here's a tribe of people I'm building. So part of visibility um, and marketing in this stage of business is about building community, building a place that people want to hang out in, building a place where you've got a loyalty of a tribe that continues to read or continues to contribute or continues to engage with the content and uh, information that you're putting out there. Okay. So when you're focused on, if you are in the stage of marketing, uh, I would love to know, what do you think is it working? Uh, you know, in your, um, your marketing, what, what do you think isn't getting traction for you uh, that you think could be improved? Are you having conversations with real people or are you getting stuck on learning activities that actually really isn't directly going to impact your clients, but just sort of looks good, you know? And I want to know what that looks like for you so that I can help you uh, in the Q&A session to, so that I can sort of help you develop what your visibility plan uh, may be for you. So now that you've heard about the prep stage, you've heard about stage one, two, three, right? Stage one being foundations, stage two being a uh, validation stage and stage three being visibility. What stage do you fall in, right? And if you have self-diagnosed uh, in where you are at, does that sort of change your point of view or your perspective about what you should be spending your time doing instead with those activities that I've outlined for you? Um, what does knowing where to focus and what stage you're in helps to inspire you to know what are those key activities to focus on today, okay? I wanna know what that looks like for you. And I know it's Valentine's Day, I know Lee has been here uh, and she needs to give some time to her husband, but yes, watch the replay for sure. And uh, But if you are still here with us, uh, I would love to know what stage do you think you're in and what activities should you think you should be focusing on after listening to those three stages uh, that you think would change where you're gonna create boundaries in your time and effort. Now. If you're not sure about what that is and you need a bit more support on doing the things that you say you're going to do for your business, formulating that escape plan and your side hustle plans, um, we do do that for you in uh, the Academy of Cubicle Crashers. So before we go into Q&A, I just want to tell you a little bit about the Academy because um, this is the last 48 hours to register for it before we close the doors. Um, but 
what we are ultimately doing in this academy is planning your cubicle escape and creating work, that body of work that matters for you and also is going to reward you financially. So we don't just talk about business in, in the academy. We really help you create a plan of transition. How are you going to make changes in your personal life, in your mindset, in your belief systems, in the way that you ask for support, in your approach to solve problems rather than see, see problems? OK, uh, and we're going to help you build a business that you're going to actually be proud of. Right. Not just any business, a business you're designed to do right with your gifts, your skills and your experience, know how to combine your interests, knowing how to create something with passion, but also with purpose. <coughs> we're going to help you launch a side hustle you can love, whether you're working full time or you've already quit. We're going to help you do that in that micro uh, those micro stages we talked about so that you are beta testing, you are validating before you put your you know, real work out there on a website and be confident to know what you're charging, to be confident to know, actually, this is not the only offer I'll ever offer in my business. This is leading me to bigger stuff uh, and designing that plan for you in your business model, in the way that you're going to market, in the in the things that you need to articulate and value in order to um, showcase that to your clients. We really help you develop the foundations and um, skills that you need to market your business without feeling, like I said, sleazy about it. Um, and, and that's going to be a huge, huge part of what we do at the, at the Academy. So a lot of people that belong to the Academy, some of them you'll see here from uh, these faces in our Academy this round. Um, these are some of our community members that have been with us in the past or are joining us even in this current um, intake for the Academy. They've all come from different backgrounds and have strategically created their cubicle escape plans and business launches with us. There's people that are coaches. There's people who are consultants. There are people who have been lawyers. There's people who have been app developers. Like, all these people start at where you are and all of the people started with either no idea or some kind of idea and we have helped them launch their businesses so danny for example you've seen around um he went from you know digital uh businesses to a personal brand and now he's been launching corporate training and team leadership coaching uh that he started about four or five months ago and he's been profiting from that ever since he works with some of the biggest um uh, governmental bodies in singapore which would not have been able to have been done if he was going to be perfect doing it you know he moved imperfectly and he launched before he felt he was ready and that's what really helped danny achieve his results and we do that we do did that with him in the past six months sophia who you saw in our last chat show last week uh at this webinar um you know she talked a lot about quitting her job this year after working with us um combining her escape plan with consulting gig and a freelance idea that she had while growing her leadership coaching business for women Elaine, who's worked with us many, many years before, went from corporate lawyer all the way to launching uh, the most uh, the, the Hong Kong's number one eco-conscious e-commerce site for beauty and wellness. And she did that, you know, very opposite of lawyering. But we were able to help her bring together her passions and actually skill sets to develop this idea. And now this has been such a purposeful business for her to start in Hong Kong. Um, Diane, who uh, was a guest a teacher in you know our webinar series here as well she started with being an academic teaching university teaching urban planning right which has nothing to do with the business she has now but we helped to repurpose her skills to be actually a coach to help other coaches uh, create learning experiences create courses products speeches workshops she really took her academic strengths and actually applied that to make money to teach other people the skill set that they don't possess Pam, who started working with us about six months ago, is also part of the Academy. Uh, she's also a lawyer that is now working on helping professional women write their first book, right? She has some publishing background, and one of the biggest mandates for her is helping people tell their story, right? Helping people structure their story <coughs> in such a way that they're launching their first book and creating a place for women that feel really stifled in their creativity to come back into that mojo uh, of feeling brave to tell their story and write a book and, and get that off their bucket list. Um, and Lewis, who is an app developer who develop apps for themselves, uh, for himself to, to travel around the world and have a location independent business. Now, uh, uh, you know, is a facilitator, an app development teacher for new app developers. And he does that in um, a group uh, learning program as well. He's developed that idea from uh, being a part of our community as well. So all these people, came from different versions of ideas and developed a plan to launch and everybody launched differently. And this is why it's such a personal 
um, program for a lot of people, uh, it's really not a once, uh, you know, like a one journey, one map that I give to everybody and go, hey, or just do this and I hope you're successful. We really take the time to map out what it is that you really need. When we start with your transition plan, right? Step one, everybody goes through this. It's like, what do we need to actually be doing, you know, in your in your um, environment, your, you know, learning about your skill sets, learning about what those conditions that you need to set in your life to do that. And all those guys you just saw sort of up here had to create that transition plan first by preparing their environment, their finances, their mindset to get them ready for that change and to acknowledge what those fears may be you know, when they start that business so that we know and can anticipate when those moments come up, they're not going to self-sabotage. They're going to know how to persevere forward uh, with their plan. Step two of what we do at the Academy is helping you to define your business idea, right? Find your niche, repurpose your skills and talents into work you can love that also rewards you. And we help you really to narrow down your focus uh, to create work that you can be passionate about. Sorry about the noise in the background. There's some construction workers in the outside of my house. Um, and so even if you think you know your niche, what we do there as a focus, you know, every every single month is to make sure that you're consistently actually like not second guessing your abilities and being able to incorporate some of your biggest skill sets and approaches uh, and point of views into how you help your customers. So we do that in the beginning when we help you find your niche, but we also do it ongoingly to never sacrifice you know, those gifts and you're not just doing it half-heartedly. We're really always encouraging you to do more with the work that you're going to be uh, creating for your, for, your, for your customers. Step three in what we do in the academy is also getting things launched, right? So sometimes it's not just the business launch. It could be a particular project within that business launch. Maybe it's the next group program you're launching. Maybe it's the next retreat you're launching. Everybody's going to have a different a side hustle they want to launch. It could be a freelance idea or a big of or freelance, uh, sorry, a, a, a full blown business idea, right? Whatever it is, we help you get it off the ground. We help you to validate and test it. And you're going to learn the steps to actually build a campaign to launch your side hustle without overwhelming of doing all the things and being really, really strategic and conscious about the steps that you need to take. That's actually your steps, not anyone else's, right? Everybody has custom plans that we really help to, um, develop throughout the 12 months that we, we work together. So that's going to really eliminate frustration, self-doubt and indecisiveness as a new entrepreneur. So you're moving imperfectly and you're also moving uh, consistently to answers rather than waiting for everything to be perfect in order to launch something. So every month you're going to be part of interactive learning, mentorship and supportive discussions. Every, one, every month we have a learning lab where I teach you uh, in-depth trainings of business planning, career transition planning, uh, productivity, really everything to do with those three stages we talked about. You're going to spend a bit of time with me each month going through those trainings. And all those are recorded for you in our private platform. You can go back to trainings when you've missed them or just go through particular categories of something that you want to master. Um, we have live mastermind sessions and our hot seat opportunities. These are the times that you get to pick my brain. You get to get my eyeballs and mentorship on your business and your career transition plan uh, in order to move forward. You're, right? you're not overthinking things. You're getting answers immediately. And that really allows other people to help you as well. Because as I said, it's not uh, the Lydia show, right? It's really a collective intelligence of your group members in the academy to really give you that spotlight attention to get uh, to give you that support you need to move forward. We have co-working hours for people who um, have horrible time time management. You know, they don't they can never find time to work on their stuff. Signing up for co-working hours allows you to, to sprint on uh, particular things that you want to be accountable for and end each month knowing you've done the things that you say you're going to do. And we develop those hours for you that you can join so that we can actually uh, do that with you. You know, we're planning that time for you. We're getting you to show up for a co-working session so that you're com feeling complete in a, a few activities that you can end your month with. Uh, we have tons of also bonus stuff in there. Like we have, we invite guest experts coming into the academy every month. You're going to be learning from mindset coaches, learning from financial coaches. You're going to be learning uh, for people that are marketing strategists. They're going to come in and accelerate you're learning so that you're not guessing again of where to go to find an expert. We're going to bring them to you. You're going to get access to all these amazing people that are going to be part of the academy. And then lastly, Tribe Talks. Tribe Talks are what we do uh, once a month as well, where we invite people to share their 
corporate transition stories. We share the strategies that people uh, developed in order to quit uh, or to start businesses confidently. And you can really learn from knowing how other people do it and apply it into your life. We have a private Facebook group community that we are consistently discussing things on every single day. So those are my Ask Me Any Hours. Uh, you can share things on that group. You can live stream in yourself. And you don't only wait until our calls or our co-working sessions in order to um, get your questions answered. You're, you're actually involving us into your journey every single day. Imagine having that sort of accountability for 12 months. You're going to get stuff done, you know, rather than um, relying on yourself and your own devices to, to do something because most of us are not as self-disciplined to do so. So some of our people that have come into our academy in the past or have come into our community programs have said that we've helped them to get out of their comfort zone, right? We help them to communicate about their work more honestly and authentically and have confidence and faith in the way that they present their work and market their work. So Sophia was someone that is, uh, has done this with us and she's quit a lot faster than uh, she would have done if she was to do it herself. Um, and also she's one of the people joining the academy in the next intake. Danny, who you've heard about, launched his business really quickly um, and actually developed a client list and actually going after and pitching to uh, high end clients before he even had any experiences, you know, and because he developed this approach right with us, which is moving imperfectly and and be and, 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 and getting imperfect action into his practice. And now he's been launching corporate trainings and team development workshops with some of the biggest organizations in Singapore. Right. He's never done it before. And he was able to pitch and land it. Uh, and that's because, you know, the community program has helped him to tackle his personal challenges, his self-doubt, his fear mongering critics, you know, and really laser focus, um, you know, on coaching and giving away his expertise. And he re it really led him to bigger opportunities um, that now is what the business Danny has developed for himself six months later. Elaine, who you've heard about, right, like went from a lawyer and transitioned into entrepreneurship. One of her pain points was uh, she didn't want to be a lawyer anymore, but she knew that there were skill sets in lawyering that can help her in a new business idea and incorporating her love for um, animal welfare, you know, um, and uh, the environment allowed her to develop this idea with us of eco-conscious products of beauty, which was a combination of her interest in wellness and beauty plus her animal welfare passion, which then developed her idea, right? So she needed perspective, she needed feedback in order to actually understand the business that she needed to start. Uh, and she'd been really successful starting it. So uh, before we go into the q and I just wanna remind you that there are there is only 48 hours to register. Uh, for the academy. And here's the thing, you've got to apply anyway before you register. So if you've been on the fence about whether or not this is the right program for you. Are you ready for this program? All you have to do is just click on the button below the video and actually just book a call. You don't have to say yes to the, 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 the academy. I mean, I don't want you in it unless you were ready for it anyway, and that we can truly help you. So we need to have that conversation, right? So that allows you to have a chat with me. We have a couple more spots left um, for our bonuses. Um, you know, have a chat with me so that I can know where you're at. I can give you some strategic advice. And then if the academy is a good fit for you, we can then talk about the academy. And if you've been thinking about having that support and mentorship, this is the best time to do it. Because again, we will never offer this rate of 197 a month ever again. Uh, it will double in price in our next intake. We, the reason why we're doing this for this intake is we have a founding members rate that we're also doing in a way of exchange where you get to whoever's the founding members of this intake gets to help us craft and design this program going forward, right? So that's sort of um, the reason why we're very heavily curating who is our founding members, but we're also offering this incentive to start this journey with us as the founding members. Um, and our early bird bonus of getting a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, we've actually ran out of those, those bonuses actually, because we only did that for the first 10 people. But if you are attending this webinar, you can still get that. I'm gonna offer that above and beyond the first 10 people. Um, I'm gonna give you that free one-on-one -on -one session with me when you join so that you can activate that personal private coaching session, uh, whether or not, um, you know, you need me right away or not, uh, or maybe in between uh, the sessions that we have at the academy, you're going to get my personal mentorship of a private session to allow you to move forward even more effectively. Um, when you sign up today or in the next 48 hours, you're going to have early access to our signature courses we've preloaded into the platform uh, and get started right away on um, 
preparing for a kickoff session that will be happening on the 19th of February, where everybody gets to coach with me to outline their goals for the next 12 months, really know what they're going to be focused on for the first 90 days, um, so that you are, you are really um, going into this program, not like, you know, hazy on what you're going to be working on, but consciously going into it going, yeah, when I first start, this is exactly the focus, depending on the stage I'm in, and these are my goals. And so you have a lot more motivation to start this program on the right foot. So I'm going to help you do that in our kickoff session. And we'll be sending you some prep work for the kickoff session to work on in terms of goal planning so that when you come to the kickoff goal planning session, you're coming there with something to show and you're coming there with something to workshop. And then we can get started on the academy uh, uh, with a, a much more a clearer picture about what are those um, results that you want to have monthly that we can help you achieve going forward. OK, um, so again, click on the button to chat with me. Uh, we close doors on February the 16th, OK, um, at midnight. So you only really have about less than 48 hours to book that call and receive those bonuses. And then we don't open the academy again for another format. So let us know if you have any questions about and I would love to speak to you to even verify where you're at and if the academy is a good fit for you. All right. So I'm going to go back to um, let's just see here if I can open up my video again. One moment. And then we can go into questions. So if you have questions for me, <coughs> here I am. <clears throat> um, I'm going to check the ask a question tab because I think there's a few questions answered there. I I'm full aware now that it's Valentine's Day. I know that's why some of you couldn't stay that complete training. So my um, I, I don't celebrate Valentine's Day really here. But um, I know that some of you had to go because I've, I've seen that some people have had to to go do their dates and, you know, whatever. Uh, but I'm glad you're here anyway and spending Valentine's Day with me, which is great. Um, so I want to make sure to answer the questions for you, especially if you're watching the replay. Um, and I want to make sure that um, Lee's question get answered because she had to go have her Valentine's date with her husband. Okay, so Lee's question. Um, all right, so Lee um, uh, says, Lydia, if I do have a lot of experience working with a variety of people's problems on a one-on-one -on -one level, but just haven't always been specific to my topic or passion, nor specific to my ideal clients, do you always advise totally free beta services? Is it worth it or is it worth it or can it be successfully charging a low but great price for people to get them more invested in the process and get a little return on your own business investments? Great question. Um, Lee, you definitely don't need to do a free beta test, especially with something that you've already have a uh, really good experience doing, but you're maybe just changing the structure a little bit of your offer, or maybe you're just approaching that offer a little bit differently. So I agree with the psychology when people pay for something, even if it's a small amount, they do feel more invested, you know, in the collaboration and the contribution to being involved. So if it's a topic you have uh, more than a beginner's confidence on, I say charge, charge something fair, charge something that's like an inaugural rate. Uh, or a no brainer rate that's sort of like, hey, this is like really cheap, like really affordable for you, but you do have to pay something to get in. And I think, especially if you've done this before in some other capacity, it's, it's also going to be confident for you to charge a little something, something, right? And again, on a psychological aspect of investment of effort and value for that customer, charging a small rate actually is a good idea. Now, in the beginning of time, I didn't. I didn't charge my first eight customers that I beta tested with for three months because, to be honest, at the time, I've never coached before. It was a completely new industry. It was a completely new topic for me. Uh, I went from international education over to personal development and coaching. It was really brand new for me, and I didn't feel good, to be honest, in my personal way of approaching it ethically to charge. So that's my belief, right? And I did that first before I started charging the first inaugural rate of my coaching services. So everyone's gonna start differently. But for, for you, Lee, since you've mentioned that you've already had the experience working with people in you know variety of problems, you're sitting with the same problems in your current offer, you're just maybe just needing to test out a few differences of your structure by your beta, I would charge if I were you and charge something fair, charge something that is um, easy to say yes to, but also psychologically, your customer is going to invest their time because they paid something for it. OK, so I hope that answers uh, your question, Lee. All right. Uh, second question is from Brandon. If Brandon's still here, say hello in the chat box. Um, 
So Brandon, you say, after 25 years in the financial service, I have a lot of knowledge and expertise in it, but I am really burnt out. Hi, Brandon. Uh, and I'm not interested in it any longer for an independent career. Okay. So, um, Great question, Brandon, because a lot of people do sort of wonder, like, if I already have the skill set, do I want to use it again? So for people who are in that stage of question, uh, sometimes we don't know yet for sure if that's truly the answer that we say, because I know what you mean by a burnout. Like when I had my burnout, I was like, I want to I never want to work with people again. I never want to care about education. I don't want to do that anymore. Um, but that's because sometimes we can feel very jaded and exhausted from, you know, something that we've experienced in our industry that have really traumatized us, you know, in some way. And I know finance. I mean, I get a lot of bankers working with me, a lot of financial people, and they always tell me the same thing. They're like, oh, my God, I was so burnt out in banking. I just cannot look at that anymore. But sometimes that's not sometimes a fair approach to look at whether or not that is completely true for you. You may not, Brandon, work in a bank any longer. You may not even do that particular type of job role that you've done in the past to make money. But potentially, you may want to explore that question of like, is there an interest still in maybe helping people be better with their money? Uh, do I want to contribute to some sort of financial accountability in the world, right? So I know, for example, there's lots of bankers that used to work with me uh, that never want to um, work in banks again, but they still have a love for like finance. They still have the love to equip people with the knowledge to make better decisions about their money, or they go into crypto, right? And a different version of investments. Uh, they might actually even coach on the mindset around money. So some people I've worked with become money coaches or money mindset coaches or, uh, or, or budget accountability coaches. Like it really depends on where they explore that. Um, but it may still be, again, very relevant to financials, but just a different way of delivering that expertise, right? So before you sort of like cross that off the list, Brandon, I would sort of question that and go, if I wasn't burnt out and I wasn't like overwhelmed and jaded by what I've been traumatized with in the financial industry, why was I interested in financials in the first place? Like before this all started, when I was sort of a student or I got my first job in my financial industry, you know, um, what drew me to finance to begin with? We, we forget that first initial drive and motivation you know, of back in the day, what actually drove us there, you know, to begin with sometimes that could be actually quite meaningful to start with until someone, someone else sort of screwed it up for us, <laughs> you know, a bad boss, a bad, a bad organization, you know, but at some point, Brandon, maybe there was an attraction to finance that was actually quite pure and genuine. What was that about for you? How could you use that drive, that motivation to start something new with what you know today, right? So there's potentially something to explore there. Now, if that question for you, Brandon, you're like, no, 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 I explore that. I really don't want to do anything with finance anymore. There's nothing around that theory or concept I want to play with anymore. Then you can start looking at other things that you might have experienced in your life that you may have never been paid for, but may be good at achieving. So that's also sometimes a way that other people have um, found their business ideas that where, where I've helped with them, uh, them do is they look at things they've achieved personally. Right. So um, I may have used this example before. I, I used to work with actually same industry, a banker, a financial uh, advisor and executive I worked with. Um, she didn't want to do banking anymore, but she was really good at, at, at financial accountability and planning out her life. And she was really organized. But one of the things that she really decided that was actually a better business idea is something she experienced as a mother. You know, so yes, she was a banker. Yes, she was in finance. But one of the biggest achievements she's ever had was raising an eight year old child who had autism and special needs. And that was one of her proudest things she's done as a human being. And as she found herself giving away this advice to other moms, other blogs, other forums and doing it for free. And she never considered it as, an, as a business idea because she's like never been paid to do it. But actually, after reframing that and sort of going, well, how else have you helped in your life? How else have you solved something for yourself that could be quite valuable to help other people solve? That's when the sort of ding, 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 you know, moment happened for her. Um, and then she started to think about, wow, that could be a business idea because I actually have proven myself there. I have eight years experience raising an autistic kid for me to have actually relevant information and advice to give other moms who might be starting on year one with a special needs kid. And actually her financial background came into play again because she ended up starting to help part of her modules to help mothers with special needs kids was to financially be accountable for those things they have to budget for to do special education for their kids, to get 
assistance, right, of a, a person to help out with their children, uh, you know, new diet changes that they have to save up for, whatever it is, special schools, special uh, needs activities or games that they have to invest in. She actually utilized that money accountability part of her brain in finance to also plan that out for the mom. So sometimes those skills may not be wasted. So Brandon, you can even think about like, what have you solved for yourself? What are some of the things that you find yourself immersed in, you know, or reading about or doing into, you know, uh, uh, implementing in your life that actually is something, even if you've not been paid to do it, there's a knowledge base, there's an experience there that you could potentially be sharing, right? So if you remember me saying uh, a business is built to solve a problem. So what problems can you solve in the world? What problems have you been asked to solve? What problems have you solved for yourself that could you could play with and experiment with that could potentially be a business idea? So if you can think of that and you're going, okay, I, I might want to help with this, but I've never done it before. I've never been paid. That then tells you that you may have to do a bit of some beta testing, right? Get a few clients, see if you like the work. Just like with me, when I started coaching, I didn't know. I was like, what if I get irritated? coaching people? What if like, I really can't stand, you know, dealing with people's frustrations? I think it sounds really good and meaningful, but maybe when I do the work, I could be quite not happy. You don't know. So that's why I took on those eight beta clients because then it wasn't just for them to get value or for me to refine my offer and, you know, be confident and having something to show. But it was also partly for me to realize whether I enjoyed the work. So that helps to solve that question as well. Okay. Hope that was helpful for you, Brandon. All right. Um, all right. So, Brandon, I think there was two, two uh, questions there that you had uh, repeated. So I'll just delete that other one. But hopefully that was clear for you for the first one. Um, and then you had another question, uh, which is, uh, can you share examples of people who have shifted industry focus from jumping from corporate to independent work? So I did share that one with you with the mom, right, with finances. Um, you've heard of some of them that we talked about today, you know, people who are lawyers going into publishing uh, or writing coaches. Uh, so, you know, there, there's been, if you actually um, go into the sale, so if you click on the button for the Academy of Cubicle Crashers, there's a couple of video testimonials. You heard, you'll hear from Ella, Danny, Sophia, and Pam. These are all the people that are actually started in, uh, from a corporate background that was sort of slightly different and went into independent work. And they explained a little bit about their journey during those videos. So you can talk, you can hear a little bit more about that. If you also go back to session three of this webinar training, Brandon, you'll start to see the chat show that we had last week where we actually shared a lot about that journey of where they made that jump, how they made that jump, how that business idea was developed. And a lot of it was through what we spoke about today, the analyzation, that experimentation with ideas of sort of going, what can I repurpose? What other problems can I solve You know, with the, the skill sets that I have? And whether or not I have other things that I've experienced in my life that can actually be quite strong to utilize as a business idea. It's not always just things in our professional corporate resume that is valuable. It's also things that we've experienced and transformed and solved in our own lives that has to be played with. So hopefully some of those examples I've given you throughout this training, uh, in the videos that you'll watch uh, in the session three of this webinar training or on the sales page of the academy can help you see those stories, right? Everyone started uh, from a place of sort of a little bit of like not sure and everybody had to be honest test those ideas in order to know for sure right be, feel a, a bit of certainty you'll never be 100% certain to pursue a particular path but you will know what you need to be certain on when you perform right those tests those validation tests in order to sort of go okay that ticks enough boxes for me to persevere towards it okay I hope that helps you to answer that question um Okay, and then for uh, the last question, Bettina said from Marine, uh, can you stop after a few months if you do not find it relevant or if you can no longer pay for it? So I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the academy. Uh, okay, so Marine, that's a great question. Um, now, the reason why we've designed it as a 12 month program is actually based on feedback and based on success uh, stories that we've had in the last five years. So the 12 months wasn't a number that just sort of came out of my ass. It was actually a sort of very much a time frame that usually takes most people who are working full-time jobs to develop this transition and to actually get successful in a real launch, not just thinking about a launch of a side hustle, but actually truly doing it, getting their first customers, profiting from their gifts. Now, for people who want like, this is why we don't let people check out in the 12 months. And I'll tell you why, Marie, not because we want, I want to get you stuck there, but it really is because I know that when we are going through the beginning stages of developing a business, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of sort of like learning curves 
when it comes to developing an idea for the first time and being a new entrepreneur, there's going to be so many ways your brain and your ego is going to start to talk you out of continuing. It's going to start to doubt the process. It's going to help you critique the process in such a way when you hit a wall, you know, when you sort of hit the first problem in your business, you're going to be like, oh, oh my God, that's too scary. I'm leaving now. And I don't want to check out. So when those moments happen is actually the people that are successful going through with it uh, and actually developing successful businesses, you know, a lot of what you've seen in the success stories, they're not, they're not the ones that weren't free of fear. There were ones that looked at that fear and continued to develop that next door for themselves through that fear. And if you were left to just check out at any point in that program, then people will just be checking out left and right. <clears throat> and that's not actually what this program is all about. This program is about incremental effort. <clears throat> Let me take a sip of water. This program is about building incremental effort to allow you not to self-doubt and actually self-sabotage. Because people do do that. Majority of people that keep coming back, like, you know, that didn't sign up for a program, try to do it on their own. They always tell me the reason why they get stuck somewhere or they never move forward from a particular stage is because they keep going in loops because of what you're saying, where they can just stop whenever they feel things are going tough. And that is the human brain, the practice that needs to be eliminated, you know, in order to, for you not to keep doing that you know, so that you are truly reaching your goals, because that's what the community is built for you for, Maureen, is that when you hit those stuck points and when you hit those moments of trouble or uh, mistakes you're making or failure, you're not checking out. You're outsourcing that worry to the group so that we can help you move forward with it and help you develop new strategies, new approaches, you know, in absolutely never giving up on your dreams. That is what really causes is perseverance and the attitude of continuing to go that really helps people to gain success. So um, I hope that answers your questions that no, we don't get let people stop a few months in and, and when it's not relevant because we will make it relevant for you. That's the whole point of a collaborative community experience. This is not a course. So that's something I want to be very clear on. Academy of Cubicle Crashes is not a course. It is a very organic experience that answers the questions that you need to know today. So everybody is going, that's why we have more live experiences. That's why we have the 24 seven open group. That's why we have some structure of a learning lab and, you know, things that we talk about every month, but the real value in the, in the mastermind is actually what you bring to the table. Every month, you're going to have new questions. Every month, you're going to have new milestones to hit, new benchmarks to cross, new focuses and mini goals to accomplish. And that's what we talk about mainly in our coaching sessions. That's what we converse about daily. In our groups, it's not a structured course by course modular experience. This is truly an experience of design to help you with what you need. So it will always be relevant to you. Okay. And there's so many accesses to me in what we've designed in the components of this program that you'll be able to find me with, whether or not in the private group, in our mastermind sessions, in our co working sessions, or even in our, in, in our learning labs, right? Together. Everything we create is really for you, but we're also designing in a way that's almost like a bit of more of an open format so that you're not forced to do a curriculum or, uh, you know, content that isn't relevant for you. Uh, and you're actually utilizing this community program and my mentorship and guidance to get you to immediate answers now. Okay. Without you Googling and researching and overthinking the entire process. Um, so I hope that was helpful to, um, get you going there as well, Maureen. Okay. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, so Maureen, you said, um, that was a good answer for you. You're hesitating for financial reasons. Yep. Like I said, you know, you do have to, you know, budget for this. I mean, that's why we priced it at a low rate for working professionals, you know, 197 a month. If you think about it, it's not a huge amount for what you're going to be getting for, for, for clarity. And also this consistency of guidance. It's not a DIY course, you know, it's very intuitive. It's very much time with me, you know, uh, and we are really trying to make it affordable for a lot of people uh, that are here to be able to do that quickly and do it um, uh, intimately with us and, and invest not only the time, you know, but, the, but the, um, the focus, right. And the, and the financial accountability to this as well. So if you can find a way to save money, like, or cut down expenses to make 197 a month yourself, you know, um, that would be uh, hopefully a, a group, group program for you to join. Now, Maureen, if you're sort of feeling like, you know, what is the value that I'm going to get specifically for my business ideas or the stage I'm in, 
happy to have a chat with you actually. So just like book a call with me and we can just jam it out. So whether or not you do decide to join the program, we can at least talk about where you're at, what you need to be focusing on, what are some obstacles that might be standing in your way that you might not be seeing it clearly. Um, I'm happy to help you with that, you know, and we can jump on a call and do that. And if the academy is a good right fit for you and it does provide the value that you need to you know, get to your goals faster this year, then I would love for you to join. But you can maybe judge that value a little bit more clearly once we've had a call and once you've had a chance to talk it out with me. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that is a bit clear for your question, but also I'm happy to invite you on a call for us to do this together as well. Okay. All right, guys, if we don't have any more questions, I know um, we are, we've been on for a little while now. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me for our last session for uh, this learning series. And here's the thing, we always wanna know what else you wanna learn. Maybe from this webinar training or this learning series, it instigated some um, bigger questions for you. You know, some other topics that you would love for me to teach on. Uh, please let us know in the chat box, what are other content topics that you would want me to teach about? We run a webinar training at least once a month. So if you tell me what you want to learn, that makes my job easier as well. And we can make sure that the next time you sign in is something that you truly want to learn. Uh, and we can help you really with those freebies and free trainings that we keep making sure, you know, to offer you guys here as well. Um, thank you so much for collaborating. Thank you for contributing to this webinar. I hope I do see some of you at the Academy. Uh, we have some amazing people that have joined so far. They are really people that are invested in building a meaningful business. But really, the biggest thing that I value in this community, these people are givers, right? They're not just there to take information or to get mentorship. They're also there to know that the more they give, the more they get. They're people that like helping. And they don't, don't want to do this whole thing alone. We want to feel like a family to do it. We want to feel like we can talk about what's going on with our lives as we do it. Uh, it's not just a business boot camp. You know, it really is about talking about the real changes in your emotional changes, in your bravery, in your imposter syndromes that can be happening. Um, and we want to be able to have a safe place to talk about that. That has nothing to do with business most of the time, but everything to do with your confidence and how you feel right about your work and what you think you're capable of doing. And that's what real true freedom is, is that expression of self, the freedom to do things, even if you don't think is perfect or can land the mark, but doing it anyway. Uh, and a lot of that is are, are going to be part and parcel of the discussions that we have. So I can't wait to introduce you to the Academy uh, community. There's some amazing people there. You'll hear from some of them, even from uh, the information page for the Academy. Take a look at those videos. Talk, like, you know, see if they are your tribes. Here, these are the people that you can relate to because I want to make sure that you are the right person to join as well. So book that call in. Let us know if you want to have a chat with me. There's only 48 hours left anyway. Uh, even if you're interested to join now or another intake, it's great to, for me to know a bit more about who you are. And then we can talk about whether or not the Academy is a good fit for you this year. Okay. Have a great rest of your day. Um, have a great Valentine's Day if you're celebrating it with your loved ones and um, or your loved one, your significant other. Uh, and I will see you. Uh, in our other webinar trainings and uh, we will make sure to keep you up to date for our upcoming trainings and have a great week. Uh, and thanks again for giving me your time and, and, and um, attention today. Bye everybody. And thank you, Bettina, for helping me out in the chat box. See you later.